and I am live. Hey, I'm Sean. Welcome to Federal Prison Talk. Today, I'm going to go over 10 rules that you need to live by if you're doing time in prison right after this. All right, I am back. That's a song I wrote in prison, so I always try to play it once in a while. Anyways, uh, today I got a call from a guy named Frank. He's got to turn himself in next month. He's asking me all these questions about, you know, what to expect when you get there and, and the kind of rules and stuff. And I thought, you know, I'll do a video about all the rules. I came up with 10 rules. There's a lot more. And, uh, and uh, if you guys want to answer, ask me questions and all that, we'll stop and we'll get, because I'm not going to be able to, there's a lot more rules. Uh, like the first one I'm going to cover is hygiene. Uh, and these aren't in no particular order, but, uh, and I did time in a federal prison camp, guys. I did 52 months for wire fraud at a federal prison camp in Florence, Colorado, which is next to a FCI medium and next to a penitentiary and next to the ADX Supermax. And all levels of prisons have their own rules. But most of the rule, these rules I'm going to cover probably will, will hold up in every prison. Now, when you get to penitentiary, they got a whole nother. They don't only have rules. They have codes. And camps, we don't really have all that. So if uh, I'm missing something that if you went to a penitentiary, you know, uh, I didn't do time there. I know you guys are really hardcore with your rules. Uh, but in camp, we have we have a lot of rules. So the first one I'm going to bring up is, is hygiene. And this one probably should be number one because uh, it's really important. You need to shower every day. If you don't shower in any prison, they're, they're going to make you. You cannot be stinking. And especially if you got a celly that you live with. You, you, okay, not only you got to shower and you got to wash and you soap and all that stuff. You got to keep your clothes clean every day. Don't be wearing the same pants for three days in a row. You need to change your underwear. You need to do all that stuff. Uh, also, uh, your cell, your your cubicle, your dorm, whatever kind of area you're living in, man. Like behind me, you make your bed every day, okay? Uh, you keep it neat. You don't have things all over the top of your locker. You don't have paperwork. You don't have your soup bowl, your you're, you're going to have these plastic bowls that everybody uses in prison to cook their food and stuff. Don't be leaving your food and your nasty stuff all over. You live with somebody. And even if you don't live with somebody, you need to keep your area clean. You never know when you're going you're gonna to get a new celly that's going to come in. And uh, that's just number one rule. Hygiene, 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 man. Um, and, and that's the first thing you want to buy on commissary. You want you want to get soap and shampoo and body wash and shaving cream and razors and you know all that stuff even if you have a beard you want to shave your neck and you don't want all that stuff sticking out um you know you want to keep your hair well groomed so you want to get your hair cut you know on a regular kind of schedule uh you just you want to you want to if you can afford the underarm and uh they don't really have colognes and stuff but they have oils and things you can use but you, you just want to be clean that you, you got to be clean uh, and that that's rule number one that that's very important and uh, let me see if I got any more new comments in the room. Alan is here. Hey, Alan, how we doing? Let's see here. Hey, Sean. Hey, Alan. Good, good to see you. Good to see you. And uh, the next rule that I'm going to go over is uh, I got them written down here. Is your your bathroom rules? <laughs> and these are kind of important. Okay, uh, these these are pretty important. So. Uh, and I can even show you a picture of what a prison bathroom looks like. So that's kind of a, so uh, it's pretty much standard in, at least in the prison camps, as you can see the stalls close. All right. There's urinals. So I learned this the hard way guys, when I first got there. Uh, so I, I had to take a piss, right. And there was two guys already using the urinals. So I went to use the stall. I lifted up the, the lid. I pissed. I made sure there was nothing, no drops or anything. I came out of the stall and a guy got on me. He goes, he goes, uh, did you just take a piss in there? And I said, yeah, I just took a piss in there. 
And uh, he told me, no, 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 no. You don't, you don't do that, man. I said, oh, don't worry. There was no drops or anything. No, he goes, look, man, I'm going to tell you once and I'm, and I'm not going to tell you again. You only piss in the urinals, okay? Period. We don't care if you drop, you don't drop, you wipe it up after you mop the floor. No, 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 no. You only piss in the urinals. If you can't wait, there's eight other bathrooms in this building that you can go find, okay? So also, also um, if you're taking a dump, you need to flush every time. I mean, you just, if it's 10 or 20 flushes or 30 flushes that you got to do while you're in there, they, nobody wants to smell your shit, Okay. And you need, you need to flush anything that comes out of you. You keep your, it's a constant flush. Okay. Also, when you go in these bathrooms, there, there's a spray bottle in every single one. Okay. You spray down the seat, you wipe it down, toilet paper. Uh, sometimes you got to bring your own toilet paper. Sometimes they'll have some in there, but you, you spray that seat before you spray that seat after even the next guy that comes in after you, he's going to spray the seat. Even though you did, it's, it's always sprayed. There's always a spray bottle. In every type of prison, we've always got a spray bottle for for those toilets, and uh, and the sinks. So if you're shaving in the morning, brushing your teeth, whatever you're gonna do, you're gonna wipe out that sink. No water on the top of the sink or anything. No hairs in it. Nothing. They usually have towels to wipe down the sink. If not, grab some toilet paper. If not, bring your own towel. You wipe down that sink. These are like bathroom rules, man. These are like really really important. Okay. Uh, let's see if I got some more comments here. Not yet, but I got a few people in the room. Thanks, thanks for joining me, guys. So, you know, keep the questions coming, and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I'm going to go with rule number three, asking questions. <laughs> like, okay, so in a prison camp, a little different than in a penitentiary. Um, when you first get to a prison camp, uh, People are going to ask, come up to you, ask you where you're from. They're going to ask you how much time you got. But they usually never ask you what's your charges, what are you in here for. Now, you in a penitentiary, that's probably the first question is what are your charges. Because they want to know if you're a snitch, a pedophile, a chomo, that's a child molester. They, 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 they want to know uh, that. And then they're going to ask you how much time you got. And then they're going to probably ask you to show your paperwork. Uh, and you get to camp, they don't care about paperwork. Uh, you're not even allowed to have anybody's paperwork, not even your own in the camp. You get caught with that. You can do time in the shoe. And then the penitentiary, paperwork's like you got you to produce. That, that's, that's the proof of your crimes. And they can tell if you were a snitch or a chomo, child molest or whatever. Camp, not so much. Uh, there are probably are a few camps that do want to see your paperwork, but most are no. Um, so, uh, but, but you want to ask... So there's asking certain questions, you know, um, like if you're in a low facility, that's where they put all the, the child molesters. I hear it's half half the population or more as a child molester. And from what I'm told, you're not allowed to ask them if they're a child molester. You can get you can get thrown in the shoe or written up or a shot. Apparently they're protected. Um, but what you're not really going to walk up to somebody and go, hey, are you a snitch? Are you a child molester? But it does happen. Um, uh, now, asking somebody if, if they're a snitch, you better have, if you're going to ask somebody that question, you better have something to back up why you're asking them that question. Because to call somebody a rat or a snitch in prison and you have no proof that they are. Now, penitentiaries, um, they're, they probably have no problem asking you that and they want to see your paperwork. In a camp, it's, it's almost an insult to ask that. Well, they don't allow child molesters in camps anyways. So you're probably safe, but you know, you don't want to get too asking too many questions, you know, uh, especially if you're new, uh, it's okay to ask questions when you're new, like, you know, how do I find a job? Where's this building? Is there church services? Hey, can I get uh kosher food at the chow hall? All those kinds of questions. Those, those are fine, but you don't want to get too personal. You don't want to ask too many personal questions. Let me see if there's any more comments. Oh, I got some comments now. Let's see. I got P Nova. Hey, how we doing? Thanks, thanks for coming in. Uh, T Chandler. Hey, Sean, glad to catch you live. Um, good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks, Katrina. She's a regular. Hey, P Nova. Hey, okay, Katrina. Hey, Sean. Yeah, Katrina had some good news a few days ago. Uh, I, did he did he get shipped out yet, Katrina? Because that was like two days ago. So maybe maybe he got shipped. He got sent to the camp. 
Uh, so I'm going to get to rule number four here. And uh, let's see here. Let me get this comment off there. And let me see if I can show you. I got a little video thing here. And rule number four is shaking hands. Let me see if I got this on here. That's that's what the bathrooms look like. So uh, shaking hands. Uh, well, this is shaking hands with a guard, and you don't do that. <laughs> that was a different rule that I haven't got to yet. But uh, so when you first – here's the rule. So uh, let's see if they're showing it. So uh, shaking hands. It's okay to do on the first day when you get to prison. You can shake hands and meet people and greet them. And on the last day that you leave, any days in between, it's fist bump. Fist bumping. Uh, let me take this off the screen. I, I guess my computer can't handle all this. It's freezing. That, Anyways, <laughs> um, so shaking hands, there's not a lot of that that goes on. When you first get there, it's okay to you know meet people and greet them and the day that you leave. And other than that, you don't really see people shaking hands unless it's like making a deal or something, uh, you know, or betting you $20 on the Super Bowl and you handshake on that. Maybe that's that's okay. But you don't see a lot of shaking hands. Um, not not really. And uh, let me see if I got this here. Um, I had a note here. Uh, hugs. Hugs. It, 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 there's no hugging in prison unless the last day and you got some real close friends that you met, you might give them a hug as you leave that last day or if somebody dies. My father died while I was in prison and a few guys came up to me and kind of gave me a, you know, like, Hey man, I'm sorry about your dad dying. And you know, they gave me that kind of, that's okay. And that's about, that's about it. I mean, you, you know, unless, unless you're gay in prison, you'll, you'll see that. That'll happen. But uh yeah, that's that's pretty much the rule for that. Uh let's check my comments and I'm gonna get to rule number five here. Uh Katrina says, not yet. He still hasn't went. Okay, it should be any day now though, right? And uh let me get here to rule number five. The chow hall or the dining room. They don't always call it a chow hall anymore, they do call it the dining room. Where do you sit? I got salad bar knocking on the table, reaching across, chewing food, stuff like that. So um, let me see if I can show you a picture of the chow hall. Uh, let's see here. So chow hall. Yeah, I got a picture. <laughs> just, just to give you an idea. These pictures aren't showing up too well. Anyways, so uh, first rule, first thing you want to know, like your first day in prison, Everybody wants to know, uh, where do I sit? Where can I sit? So, again, in a prison camp, it's a lot different than a penitentiary. Uh, so I'm just going to go from my experience in the prison camp. Uh, I understand in the penitentiaries and the mediums, the whites sit with whites, the blacks sit with blacks, the Mexicans sit with Mexicans, the others or the Asians sit with the Asians, period, period. A little different at a camp. My first day at the chow hall, I noticed uh, one half was white. The other half was Mexican. And, and there was divisions with some blacks. There was a Samoan table. There was a Pacific or Pacific Islanders table. There was a Filipino table. Um, then there was like a Southern Pacific, like I want to say the guys from Vietnam and Korea, Laos, those kind of countries had their own table. Some prisons is just called others. Depends how many races there are. The more there are, the, then they get their own table. But it, all all the races sat at their own table. But as I sat there and I looked and I would see a white guy with sitting at a black table, a couple Mexicans, a white guy, a Chinese guy, all at one table. And I saw a little of that. So the, the general rule was you eat with your own race, but you are allowed to eat at somebody else's table if you are invited. So I had a friend from San Francisco. He was Samoan. So I got to sit at the Samoan table one night because he asked me, come on over, Sean. And he had to talk to me about some things because he was going home to San Francisco. And uh, and he asked, hey, guys, can can he sit with us? And they all nodded, yeah. They give me that nod. So I had, you know, dinner with them. One night, uh, um, 
was it salty? Uh, he was my friend from Jordan. And uh, so there was a Middle Eastern table. And uh, one night I sat with them. But both these two nights, now after I was done, uh, and I, you know, left the chow hall, nobody came up to me. What are you doing sitting with the, with the Middle Eastern guys? It's not like that at a camp. As long as you're invited and everybody at the table has no problem with it being there. But I did feel uncomfortable sitting at that table and looking around like, you know, I, it, it just didn't feel right. Um, but it's okay to do. It's okay to do. So I, that was only twice. Uh, so when, and, and, uh, and uh, I know in the camps, the lows and uh, mediums, they have salad bars. I don't know, don't, don't know about the penitentiaries, but they have like an all you can eat salad bar. It'll be mixed greens. They'll have cucumbers, maybe beets, um, you know, different things to put on your salad. They'll have a soup uh, container. There might be uh, leftover cornbread that you can grab. And they have leftovers and different items, salt and peppers and things that you, uh, there's a sneeze guard and there's tongs. But on the salad bar, you know, you got a lot of guys behind you, 100 guys, 200 guys want to eat. So you don't want to sit there taking all day, you know, making your salad. There's dressing you got to put on the salad and all that. But you want to be clean. Okay. There's guys on the side that if you do spill your salad dressing and it goes on the edge, they'll come with a towel and clean it up. But you want to keep moving. And, you you know, always use the tongs. You know, it's it's all about respect in prison. It's, it's, it's always about respect, no matter what level you're in. If you're in a camp or a high or a penitentiary or the supermax, always about respect for the other guy. Here's the thing. The, the, the inmates that demand respect are usually the ones that don't give it. <laughs> but as long as you're respectful of the other, you know, just worry about your side of the street. Keep your side of the street clean and you'll be OK. Also with the salad bar. So there's this thing about knocking on a table. Now, uh, so when you get ready to leave, you're done with your food and your tray. You want to, I, I, I hate the rule is I think you knock two times and that's to let the table know that you're going to pick up your tray so that when, cause some of these tables are wobbly and stuff and you get up and maybe you could spill their drink. So when you knock two times, it's letting the guys know that you're leaving. Now, somebody else told me that knocking two times means a whole nother thing. And, and there was kind of speculation to what there, you knock once you knock twice you knock three times, and maybe some of you guys can help me out. But what I understood, it was just to let the table know you're leaving so nobody uh, gets startled or anything like that. Uh, another thing was reaching across the table. In a penitentiary, oh, there's sticklers on this. But at a camp, like, so uh, guys will bring in hot sauce and sriracha sauce and, you know, different things to put on their food. They're, they're personal, and they'll lay it on the table. And uh, you don't want to grab somebody else's hot sauce, okay, because that's not yours. That's their personal item. Now, they'll offer it to you a lot. Uh, and anything, if you're going to reach for anything, you're, even your drink, and your elbow is going to be over the other guy's tray, you need to be very careful that you're not, you don't have your elbow over as you're reaching for your drink, okay? So, I mean, it's you never reach across the table. You should not do that in life, period. But in prison, man, you got to be really, really careful. And, and again, it, it, never grab somebody's hot sauce or anything that they brought to the table unless you have their permission to do so. Don't reach across and say, as you're grabbing it, you don't mind, do you? No, 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 no. Also, chew in your food. You know, none of this. Chew with your mouth closed, okay? You know, got to have these table etiquettes, these manners, okay? And use your napkin. Wipe your face. Don't have stuff all over your face. People have to sit right in front of you. We don't want to see that, okay? So you wipe your face, use your napkin, okay? I mean, th these are common sense things, guys, but it's really critical in prison that you obey all these rules. So I call that rule number five. Let me go down and check about comments here. Uh, yeah, I got a few here. Katrina, marshals don't work on weekends. Well, if, if I'm running from the law, <laughs> they'll, they'll come get me on a weekend. I'm sure they're not going to get me till Monday, but I, I know what you mean. Uh, and then she says, Hey, P Nova, call Sean for my phone number. Call me. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. No problem. All right. Let me get on to rule number six. Uh, what I got here. Rule number six, uh, working out, walking the track schedule of others. So, one of the big, big things in prison is, is working out, but there's a lot of rules and etiquette and behavior and respect 
that comes comes with working out. So let me see. I think I got some pictures to show you. They're not the best, but let me see here. Let me get, uh, so working out. So, oops. All right. Well, you got the, I get. I guess it showed for a minute. So, uh, if you have a weight pile at your prison, if you're lucky, they're they're pulling, they're taking away the weight piles, but they still have exercise equipment out there. There's plenty of treadmills and exercise bikes and ecliptics and all that, all kinds of uh, you know uh, equipment to use. But the thing is, you, it, 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 again, with the hygiene, so you need to bring your own towels. Uh, clean towels, and you want to wipe down the seats. You want to wipe down the handles. If you're lifting bars after you're done, you want to wipe off your sweat. And if you have a bottle, a spray bottle of some kind of a, a, a you know, a, a antiseptic, or you can you can usually ask uh, the guy at the cage, guy who runs the. Uh, there's there's a, there's that's one of the jobs is is uh, is recreation, and you can ask them for a spray bottle. That, you know, maybe it's bleach or something like that, but. You want to wipe down every equipment that you that you use. If you're lifting weights, you need to put the weights back where they belong once you're done with them. And also, when it comes to working out, guys have been there for years, and you know there's groups. Most guys work out in groups, so if you can find a, at least one or two guys to work out with, um, it works better for everybody. But guys have their time slots. You know, every morning at ten o'clock, these four guys are there, man. So, and you you need to ask. That's what's okay to ask questions when you first get there, when you go out to the weight pile or the gym or the exercise room. You want to find out the time slots that things are going to be open because you don't want to just start working out and four guys come up and you know and you're using their equipment because that's their time slot. They've earned that right. They've bought that right. Some guys even buy that time slot, believe it or not. So you, you got to be very respectful and you got to find out the open days and the open time slots when you can work out. And, and sometimes you'll find like, at, you know, after child, nobody's, nobody's working out till five o'clock and you got a free half hour or there's nobody at the weight yard. There's different times you can do that. Um, there's also w- walking the track. So that's a big thing. Walking track. All prisons have a track of some kind. Um, ours was a pretty big track. I think if you walked it three times, it was a mile. Uh, and you're going to see, especially after dinner, and in the mornings, groups of people walk in twos and threes and fours, and they walk and they walk miles, right? But guys have the this is where they have their conversations. This is where you get your deep conversation. This is where guys are getting personal with each other, okay? So when you walk a track with somebody, uh, this is where friendships and bonds are made. This is where people get really close, but you don't want to be too close behind them. You don't want to ear hustle in. You don't want to be nosy. You don't want to, you know, you know what I mean? You need to keep your distance, social distance. I, I suggest at least 10 feet apart. And if you're a fast walker, work your pace out so you're not butting into other people's conversations. Uh, very important. People are having conversations about things you don't want to know about. Okay. You don't want to know what they're talking about. Trust me, you don't want to know what they're talking about. That's their business. It's not your business. You need to keep be very mindful when you're walking the track because you may have some conversations with some friends of yours that you made in prison. You don't want nobody listening in on what you're talking about. Okay. And they may only be talking about their newborn baby or what you don't know what they're talking about, but, and you, and you don't have, you don't have the right to know in prison. You understand what I'm saying? So, and and never do this in general in prison, uh, listening in, you know, being by somebody's cell or, you know, there's a door open or you buy the TV room and you're listening in. Man, you get your ass beat for that shit. You would get your ass beat. Okay? Do not be nosy. Don't be nosy. That's coming up here, being nosy. That's another rule here. And uh, so so working out's a big thing, but be respectful. Keep your distance and find the t- find open time slots. And if you can get some partners to work out with, that's even better. Uh, let me check my comments down here, see what's going on. Hey, Harvey. Har- Harvey talks prison. Harvey, I'm sure you can relate to uh, some of these rules I'm talking about. Guys, Harvey Talks Prison. Hey, Harvey, man, I just missed you live. Was that yesterday? I Man, I, I wanted to go. I, I, I watched it like three hours later, but, man, he did a good job. Did a good job. And, uh, guys, check out Harvey's channel. Harvey did 29 years in Missouri State Prisons. He'll tell you all about it. He's got a great channel. Um, so, Harvey, uh, thanks for making it. And Harvey, maybe you you probably got some different rules in state prisons. 
I'm just covering 10 basic rules, but you know, they, they vary from prison to prison, you know, and let's see, we got a uh, bitty shadow. Hey man, love your channel. Keep making this content. You bet. Thank you. And I will. And T Chander. Hey Harvey. <laughs> yeah. Harvey's everything Sean said is facts. So, but Harvey, you know, I mean, I only went to the low, you know, the low security. So, um, you know, not everything's as important as it is in, in the penitentiaries because guys are going home. But it's still, I mean, you respect is the number one thing. I, I know you got to, it's all about respect. And if you're not getting respect, oh, well, but you need to give respect. Okay, don't worry about the people that aren't giving you. Worry about yourself. You give them respect and, you know, and keep your side of the street clean. Uh, let me get to rule number seven. You know, Harvey, you might, uh, kind of agree with this rule. Uh, rule number seven, talking to the guards, talking to staff. You never, ever want to talk to a guard or a staff alone, especially in their office. Okay. For one, people are going to think you're snitching on them. Okay. So you always go to the... You get called in the office and they're, sometimes you get called up to the bubble and, and there's nothing you can do about that. You get called in and ID, ISS or something, uh, let, that's like the Gestapo of the prison. They're going to call you in and they're going to um, interrogate you. You can't invite anybody in on that one. Um, so, sometimes you're shit out of luck. But uh, if I remember waiting to see my counselor, or my case manager, and they only have so many open hours, like two to four on Mondays and Fridays, you know, and I'm, and I'm trying to, I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to change cells or whatever my reason is. I need to talk to them, uh, trying to find out about halfway house time, whatever my, my personal reason was, I'm standing out in the door and I remember this guy's in there just chopping it up, laughing with the, well, laughing with the counselor, like, like he knew them, like it was his uncle or cousin. And I, and I'm in line with a bunch of guys and we're all, what are these guys laughing about? It's like, this guy's not even in prison. Who the fuck, who's he telling on? Who is he telling on? You know, and, and this guy was in there like 25 minutes, you know, and, and, and in the window of time, I'm not even there to see the counselor. I got shit to take. Everybody's, we're pissed. And this guy's in there chopping it up. For one, he's not respectful of the other guys in the hallway. He could see there's eight guys in line waiting to talk to the counselor or the case manager. This guy could care less. And I was getting furious. I was getting, when he finally came out there, man, I, I, I really, I'm not a violent guy, but. You know, um, anyways, the counselor said, yeah, Mr. Cowgill, you can come in now. And I was, oh, you know, and I went in and whatever. I can't remember why. It was something changed, changing cells. I didn't get my ID in the mail, something. I forget what it was. But uh, so um, you, you, and, and normally they'll leave the door open so people can hear your conversation. Because when you in a camp, yes, you're going to sit in an office with a case manager or a counselor. Uh, a lot of times they'll leave the door open because they know people want to hear. But um, if, if you can help it, man, do not, especially off to the side, like you're outside of your cell and you're like off to the side around the corner talking to a guard. Not good, man. Not good. Um, <laughs> there's two reasons you're probably going to talk to a guard and pull him aside. You're, you're making a deal with him, whatever it is, or you're snitching on somebody. Um if you want to talk to the guard, you do it in public or do it with other people around you. But now I worked in uh, the ADX Supermax during the daytime on the on the food tray line, making meals for all the inmates in there. And we would talk to the guards and chop it up with them. But we're all on the line. We're on the food line, you know, and there's three or four guards and there's, you know, uh, 15 inmates. We're all on this chain, assembly line and we're all talking it up and we're all you know, it's out in public and it's a little different then. It's a little different then, you know, but I've seen guys sitting in guards office, drinking coffee with them, chopping it up. You know, it makes you wonder. And in a, in a penitentiary, man, you come out of an office like that, man, they're, they're going to be all over you in the camp. Not so much, but still, you know, you just, you don't want to, you don't want to do that alone. And then uh, you, you're not allowed to shake a guard's hand. Or a staff member. When I say staff, that could be a doctor, that could be a nurse, that could be a teacher, that could be your RDAP, your drug counselors. They're they're kind of staff. They're not really guards. They're not correctional officers. Although they have the training 
And now that they're so short staffed in the prisons, you'll see nurses and doctors walking the ranges, doing counts, doing the jobs that the correctional officers are supposed to do because they're so short staffed right now. But you are not allowed to shake their hand or touch them. And there's a couple of re- if you touch if you touch a staff member or, or a correctional officer, they have a button that they push. It's a panic button, and everybody will come from all the prisons around you, unless you're a standalone prison. Uh, and, and, and the alarm, the bells will ring, alarms will go off, everybody on the ground, everybody on the ground, you know. And if you're in the penitentiaries, I mean, they're going to fire guns in the air, and everybody goes down if you just lay a hand. I mean, you touch, and I've seen this happen in the camp. Uh, one guy barely touched, barely touched a guard and pushed him back because he wanted him to go big. No, I'm not going. No, and he barely touched him on the ground. Everybody, and they take that shit serious. So don't touch. And then when you touch that guard, you got to remember your whole prison's going on lock. They're all going on lockdown, and now there's going to be shakedowns. You're disrupting everybody else's life, not just your own. So, you know, and if you're the one who started that. You might get your ass beat because you touched that correctional officer. And maybe you're just patting them on the shoulder. That's all that's all they need to push that button. And you just caused a you could cause riots that way. So you want to be very careful. And before I get I got a few more rules left. I'm gonna check the comments out here. Um, Katrina says, My son was told transfer center is not taking anyone, and people are going to Grady County Jail. In Oklahoma instead. What? I thought they were. Ah, oh, Katrina. That's not good. Uh, don't be jeffing with the 50. <laughs> I don't know what that means, Harvey. Jeffing with the 50. Damn, I don't know what that means, man. What does that mean? Jeffing with the 50. I don't. Shit. Get tell me what that means. Live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Central. All right. 5 p.m. Central on Mountain Time. So that would be 4, I'm writing it down, 4 p.m. Saturdays, Harvey, I'm writing it down. All right. All right, I'm catching you next Saturday, Harvey. I'm going to catch you. T. Chandler, Sean, keep up the great work. Brother, your help and info is appreciated much. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. You're welcome. Katrina says, I will try to tune in hard. Yeah, Katrina, check out Harvey's channel. You guys all check out Harvey's channel. It's a great, it's a great channel. Harvey brother, uh, T Chandler, Harvey brother, I will note your live streams and come check you out. Yeah, we're all going to be there, Harvey. <laughs> uh, thanks, T. Oh, more comments. Biddy Shadow. How long did it take you to learn the rules? <laughs> I don't even know them all yet, man. <laughs> you, you learn as fast as you can, but in about a month, you know, you know the, you know most of the rules. But um, that, you know, you learn, you learn most of the rules. But I did a video on this. Um, so there's a few words I don't have this rule here, but I'm gonna. Here's a, a rule eleven. There's certain words you don't want to use: bitch, punk, snitch. Chomo, rat, stuff like that. I did a video. Uh, I was new, maybe a month and a half in, two months in, and I I, I, I was dishwasher over at the ADX Supermax, right? And, uh, and uh, you know, I'm taking my time doing it. At this point, I, I, I hated my job. I didn't like washing dishes, and there were pots and pans, and, you know, I'm not happy, right? And I'm taking I'm taking my time. They're only paying me 12 cents an hour. I got an attitude. I'm still adjusting to prison. But this youngster comes up to me and goes, Hey man, we need these dishes, man. Every day this one's dirty. He's throwing it back in the sink. You need to wash this one again. And he's bleeding. I go, dude, stop bitching at me. And he goes, What the fuck? And he grabs me. What the fuck did you say? I said, Stop bitching at me. He goes, Oh, and he gets on me. He goes, I got it, man. You're fucking lucky. And then he backed off and I and I didn't call him a bitch. I said, bitching at me, bitching at me. There's a difference. I did a video about this, but apparently to him, there was no difference. I, I should have said, quit yelling at me, quit screaming at me. You shut up, motherfucker. I don't know. Uh, and me and this guy, by the time I, it took six months before he, I tried to talk to him a, like, uh, you know, the next day he wasn't having it. A week went by. He wasn't having it. Finally, six months goes by and he would kind of nod at me as we passed each other. 
Um, but by the time I left there, we were all right. It took a year to heal to heal that little little thing that we had going. It took a year for me and him could even talk and you know because we and we worked together the whole time, and I went through RDAP with him and everything. But I left on good terms with him. But I learned the lesson the hard way. I mean, uh, and he was you know twice as big as me and twice as young younger than me. I would have lost that fight. But in prison, people really don't want to. And this was at the Supermax. You got guards everywhere. So, you know, he probably thought twice about, you know, decking me because uh, they'll take away your good time and he's not going to be in the camp anymore. They would have they th thrown us both in the shoe and done an investigation. And since I was new and he wasn't sure, like, uh, I guess he gave me the benefit of the doubt. But, man, I learned the hard way. You can't even say the word bitching. I said, quit bitching at me. I didn't call him a bitch. I said, quit bitching at me. But it, it didn't matter. Uh, he just, you know, so don't even say that, guys. <laughs> and don't even say, I did a video. It's called Don't Say This in Prison. <laughs> so it's on, it's on one of my videos. So be very careful. Uh, let's get back to the rest of these. Harvey says, thanks, Katrina. We got Donna. Donna's in the room. Hey, Donna, how we doing? And Harvey says... Oh, the 5 0. 5 0. Yeah, watch out. The, yeah, 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 yeah. Now I understand. Yeah, back in my street days, you know, watch out. 5 0 is coming. Hawaii 5 0. Yeah, yeah. The cops, the popo. Yeah, I, I now I get it, Harvey. Thanks, man. Bitty Shadow. I think he meant 5 0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get it. Book of McGarrett, murder one. <laughs> Tony B. I just saw the news about the nuclear explosion in Ukraine. Stay safe, everyone, and good luck. Well, I haven't, and when I'm done with this, now I got to go look. Wow, a nuclear explosion. Now, um, I know there was something about Chernobyl over there uh, uh, back 20, 30 years ago. That nuclear uh, uh, facility almost blew up, and maybe it did. So, uh, yeah, Tony, thanks. I'm going to have to. Uh, that's, that's some serious shit. I'll have to look into that. Matthew, Matthew's in the house. A lot of the rules just seem to boil down to very strict to a very strict mind your own business. Yeah, mind your own business and be respectful of others, pretty much. Um, I got a few more. I got 10 today. What did I just do? Number, I just did number seven. So I got eight, nine, and 10 left. Uh, and there's a lot more, you know, a lot more. Harvey's in, if Harvey's still in the room, he could give you some of the hardcore rules. Katrina says, Tony B, no explosion, a threat. Okay. And confirmed explosion. Wow. So we'll have to check this out. And she says, not nuclear. I have the news live. Well, we're all just going to go have to find out for ourselves, won't we? And let me get on to rule number eight. Uh, where is that? Rule number eight. I got it here somewhere. Rule number eight. Going to work. Earn respect, hard work, no laziness, attitude on time. So going to work. Let me see. I think I got some pictures of work here. Let's see here. Let me get up here. Uh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. That's working out. There's the exercise equipment I wanted to show. There's work. <laughs> so uh, this is probably Arkansas. There's a, one of those back states. But even at a camp, uh, we do we do hard work like this, outdoor landscaping, things like that. Um, and I think I got another picture of prisoners at work. Yeah, here's kind of what I did on the tray on the line. Uh, so we got a big conveyor conveyor belt going by, and we're making trays, and sometimes thousands of trays, uh, sometimes thousands of trays. Let me take that off there. So anyways, when it comes to work, you know, um, they only pay like 12 cents an hour to start. You might get a better job from the gate. Now, after you've been at a prison a couple years, you can, there's like different grade one, two, three, and four. You get to grade four. These guys are making 120 bucks a month, 180 bucks a month. Not all the jobs, but I remember the pots and pans scrubber over at the ADX Supermax uh, level four. He'd make 80 bucks a month and he liked that. That was happy. He was fine with that. Um, different jobs pay different amounts. If you're just cleaning bathrooms and, in, or, and you're an orderly, you might make $18 a month. And if you get to the grade four, 
maybe you make 40 a month, you know, but it's only a two hour, uh, two hour a day job anyways. Um, but pretty much everybody starts out at the 12 cents an hour and, uh, you're going to do landscaping or maintenance or wash dishes, something you don't like to do. But what you can do when you first get to prison, uh, it's going to be a few weeks before they assign you a job and you have to go through an orientation and all that. So use those two or three weeks to go find your own job. You want to go work in the auto shop? Go up to the auto shop. Talk to the CEO who runs that. You got any openings? I'm a new guy in prison. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a newbie. Uh, I'm looking for a job. You, if you want to work in... So... Um, I had experience as a cook. I've been in restaurants all my life. I went to the dining room, like my third day there, and I talked to the CEO. I said, hey, you know, I've been a chef and everything. I, I realize I'm in prison. I'm not trying to get a chef position here, but I do have, you know, restaurant experience. Are you hiring? He says, you know what? You know how to bake. I said, I've done some baking when I worked at the Marriott Hotel. He says, great, you're hired. I need a baker. I got a guy. He's leaving next week. And he says, wait right there. And he brought me the paperwork. He signed it all out. He goes, here, take this paperwork over to your counselor. And uh, you can start tomorrow training. So I take, I'm all happy, right? Right? You know, God, you're going to give me a job as a baker. And I take the paperwork over to my counselor. And I said, I got a job as a baker. He says, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't assign you this job. You haven't been through orientation yet. And that's not going to happen for two more weeks. You can go see if they'll hold the job for you. The next day I go, I talk to the CEO. I said, I can't start for two weeks because I haven't done orientation. He says, I, I can't wait that long. I got to find somebody else. Oh, well. So, you know, I didn't get that job. Um, but, you know, that, that was me. But you don't give up. You know, you go look for other jobs. Once you've got that orientation done, they're going to assign you a job right away. So try to find a job and if they'll hold it for you. Maybe you want to work in a laundry room. Um, the laundry and commissary are really jobs that, pretty much are tied up. The cars run that. When I say car, I mean race car. Like commissary where I was at, the homeboys ran that. Uh, once in a while, somebody would slip through the cracks and get that job, but they made like $180 a month. The guys that work in laundry, they got to hustle, man. Um, they're, 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 they're doing laundry service for guys. They're getting 10 bucks a pop. They're folding and, you know, washing clothes separately for guys. And, you know, they're doing laundry service. They're selling underwear and socks under the table. They got all kinds of hustles going and you're not going to get a job in laundry unless you know somebody in there, but there's other jobs, you know, that, that nobody really wants or nobody cares about. And uh, there was a job called recycling where you're out on this garbage pile and you're, you're sorting through stuff to recycle, but you get to keep anything you find. And they brought it back to camp. These guys came back smelly and nasty and dirty in their clothes you know, but they got all kinds of good shit. They found a radio. They found this. They found that. And some guys love that job. Other guys hated that job. But, you know, go find a job before they assign but assign you one. Because they're going to give you, if you wait for your counselor to assign you a job, it's going to be the shittiest job. You know, that's just how it is. You start at the bottom. But whatever job you get, man, to earn the respect from your fellow inmates that you're working with, you need to work hard. You need to show up on time. Don't be lazy and do the job, man. Because... They don't want to pull your weight, okay? They're all trying to get through prison, too. And the last thing you want is some lazy guy, you know, like I understand why that guy came up to me when I was washing the dishes, taking my time with my, I'm only getting 12 cents an hour attitude. You know, I understand. I'm, I'm holding everybody else up. He needed certain pots and pans so he could, because he was a cook. He, need, he, he, he needed me to get done. And I'm holding, up, I'm holding everybody up. I had to learn the hard way, guys. I had to learn the hard way. You know, I didn't want to work when I went to prison. Fuck you. I'm not, I'm not going to work. That was my attitude. It all changed by the time I left that prison. And you know what? And a good attitude at work will help you when you get out of prison. You know what I mean? Um, now I work hard, you know, and, and it's paying off and things are getting better and jobs get better. And, you know, you can have a life after prison. But work ethics, I mean, it's really important, guys. It really is. Uh, let's get to... Let me check out some of I got more comments here. I guess I do. Uh, got Vinny Shadow, how do disabled people fare in prison? We had people with one leg and no legs and, uh, you know, missing hands and uh, diabetes and walkers and crutches. And they have jobs for them. Uh, like I know uh, a lot of those guys worked uh, one or two days a week 
in the dining room. What they what they do is they they call it the condiment crew, and they would put coffee and sugar and sweet and low and tea bag and a coffee bag and a spork in a in a plastic bag on a little. They all sat at the table and. And they just slid things down and they made these little packages that they sent over to the people in the shoe. And that's what they would get once a week to use. Um, there was the spice crew. So um, when spices are ordered for prisons, they come in big boxes. And uh, we had four prisons in our complex. The spice crew would un open up the box of, let's say uh, it's oregano or let's say it's Italian seasoning or it's chili peppers. And they would take and make little baggies. I have oregano and still, you know, like little one pound baggies. And then it gets distributed to different prisons. And when all these spices come in, these guys work once a week or twice, twice, twice a month even. Uh, and that's all they had to do. And they got to sit at the table and do it and fill these little baggies. And that's what they do for handicapped people. They find you a desk job. Uh, they, they find you something where you can sit down and, oh, rolling silver. That's a big one. Uh, in, in the, in the dining room, you'd get a fork and a knife and a spoon uh, well, actually, they had ran out of knives when they got there. So you were getting a fork and a spoon, and they so you would roll up a plastic fork and a plastic spoon in a in a paper napkin and make bus tubs full of those. And that's what they do for disabled people. They'll they'll find something for you to do. Katrina says, Putin Putin put his nuclear forces on high alert. I'll have to check out the news after this. Uh, Betty shout, is there any computer jobs in prison? Seems like it's only labor. I'm a Canadian, and it seems like slave labor. Canadian prisoners get an allowance whether they work or not. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've heard Canadian prisons and European prisons are a lot better. Uh, there's no computer jobs in prison. Um, there, I take that, but not in federal prison. Uh, I know San Quentin, California prison, they actually have a, a job where they teach people how to do coding. And they pay them $16 an hour. It's a new program that started like two years ago. And when they get out of prison, they get hired in Silicon Valley by like Google and Facebook. And they hire them as coders. And they pay them $16 an hour. Uh, but they'll take half of that money if you owe restitutions and fines. That goes to any victims you have. But you get to keep the other half. But that's San Quentin. That's state prisons. The feds don't want you messing with computers. No internet allowed. I mean, you can... They have a little email system, but there's no computer jobs. Uh, but then I could be wrong because there's uh, some prisons I understand are recycling. Um, there are some some federal prisons that do they recycle computers and they or what would they call it when you try to repair something? Uh, uh, um, Furb refurbage. They refurbage radios and computers and stuff. They're not. But they're not looking at a computer screen, but they do refurbish some stuff. There are some Fed jobs that do that. And, you know, um, maybe as somebody else out there has some more answers. Katrina, it's a slave labor, Biddy, and it's and it's legal. Very legal. Very legal. All right. Let me get on to number nine. Rule number nine. Let me find this here. I'm scrolling here. My rule number nine, being nosy, mind your own business, no looking into sales, ear hustling, butting in on conversations. So yeah, um, nobody wants to, being nosy. Okay. Um, for one, uh, when you're walking down ranges of cubicles or in a dorm or you're walking past people's beds or their bedrooms or their cells, Okay, that's their house. You don't stop and look in and say, ooh, what are you doing? They might be in there on a cell phone. They might be in there smoking a cigarette, you know, rolling a tobacco. They might just be in there, you know, doing something. It's none of your none of your damn business. Okay. When you and you have to get to where you to where you live, you just keep walking. Okay. Now, if 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 there's a group of guys in there and they go, hey Sean, what's going on? You could stop because they they've allowed you to stop and chat and bullshit with them. Right, or if you have a good friend there and you're walking by, hey George, what's going on, man? That might be okay. But if you don't know the people, you have no bit. Don't look in their windows. Don't look in their doors. Okay. Um, did you just keep going? Don't don't. And, and, you know what I mean? And don't kind of walk slow, creepy, and look in. None of that, man. Um, if you're in the the TV rooms, 
Uh, I, I, that was, oh, that's my next one. I'm going to get to that rule anyways. Um, so uh, it, it, if you're in line, at the, say you're in line for chow, right? You're in line for dinner and there's a long line, 200 guys, and there's three guys in front of you and they're all having a conversation. You don't want to butt in unless you know them. Okay. And don't really ear hustle. And some kind of guys talking, they're not really, things slip out. Again, none of your business. Like walking the track. Don't get too close. Don't listen in on people's conversations. You can get your ass beat for, for, for doing that. Um, so what, what else I got here? Uh, no looking in the cells. Yeah, and the next rule, the next rule is going to be on the line of that. Uh, let me see if I got some new comments first. Katrina says it's slave labor. And Biddy Shadow, it's crazy how much you say it reminds me of basic training in the army. Oh, I, I, I bet it does, huh? And uh, Katrina, how is your guy doing? And okay, let me get to rule number 10. Rule number 10. So this is the common areas, like the microwave, the ice machine, the laundry, the music room, TV room, email room. I'll start with the microwave, okay? Uh, most prisons have microwaves. I don't know about the penitentiaries. Uh, maybe they mean it. But your low securities and your camps all have microwaves. And there's usually three or four microwaves in every building. Um, so a lot of times all these microwaves are being used because guys will make 10 burritos. They're cooking for 10 people. Um, but the rule then is, uh, like in my camp, there'd be a guy there and he have all this, he's making a bunch of burritos. And I come up and I want to heat up my soup. He would stop and say, he would say, hey, man, because um, he knows he's going to be there for a half an hour. But he would stop and let me put my soup in for two minutes and pull it out and leave. Um, and if you were the guy making the burritos, you got to be respectful because you can't hog the microwave. But cleanliness, what I want to get on is being clean. When you're done with that microwave, you need to wipe it out and clean it out. And microwaves, you know, they... Whatever you're cooking in there could smell nasty. And again, there's usually a spray bottle near a microwave. So you want to spray that out and you want to wipe it out. You bring your own towel because there's not going to be any paper towels handy for you to use. So you could go grab toilet paper from the bathroom maybe. But you want to wipe out that microwave after every use and always and wipe off the counter next to it wherever things were. Uh, the ice machines. So there's ice machines in prisons. There's usually not a lot of them. Uh, we had three machines at my camp, um, two buildings people lived in, and one was at the gym. Um, so there was guys who come with a garbage bag and fill it all up. And see, every takes 20 minutes for the ice to redo and drop another load. And these guys would come with these garbage bags and fill it all up, and it's all gone. Now we got to wait another 20 minutes. I didn't like that shit, right? So these guys would – so the, the, the deal was if you got a cup, you put it on top of the ice machine – uh, and guys are waiting for the ice to drop. And if this guy with the garbage bag comes up and he sees there's four cups up there, he needs to allow those four people to get their ice, and then he can fill up his garbage bag. So, you know, don't be greedy with the ice machine. Um, uh, the laundry room. So we have laundry. We have a laundry service that the prison provides, and you can bring your bag of laundry up to them, and they'll wash it for you. But we also have uh, washer and dryer machines in the buildings that you live in. And commissary will sell you laundry soap and dryer sheets and all that stuff. But here's the deal. Um, you, it's just like going to a laundromat. You know, uh, you don't want to pull somebody's clothes out early. But the deal in prison is if somebody's got their laundry going and it's done, we normally wait like 10 minutes for them to come and get a chance to pull their stuff out. You don't really want to pull their stuff out. Uh, you know, if you go to a public laundry room, I, I've seen people pull their stuff out and just lay it on the table. You do that in prison, you can get your ass beat. If you are going to take somebody's clothes out of the washer, you put it in the dryer for them. And if, if you're waiting on a dryer and you wait 10 or 15 minutes and they're still not back to get their stuff out, you could pull their stuff out of the dryer. But don't now now it's kind of your you've become a little bit responsible. So you want to let me I mean, I, I me. If I really can't wait for that dryer, I mean, come on. I got years left on my sentence. I can't wait, you know, 20 more minutes for this guy to come here, you know, to get his clothes out of the dryer. If you really are that persistent, then 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 fold his clothes, right? Take them out, put yours in, and fold his clothes on the counter there. I mean, that's my advice. 
but you know, you don't want to, uh, you got, you, you, you're not going home today, right? Usually, I mean, if, if you are more power to you, but you got years left on your sentence, man. You can't wait a half an hour extra for a guy to come get his clothes out of the dryer at this. But also um, people will line up their clothes as they're waiting for the dryer to be, to, to be used and don't be cutting. You see somebody's got a bat, uh, their, their laundry bag in front of a washing machine that's empty. Don't go putting your stuff in there. That guy was there first. He might not be there now because he was waiting, but don't go take that machine. That, that was his machine. He was next. Okay. Now music rooms, uh, federal prisons, uh, me, I played guitar and we had a lot of guitars in there, but there was only two rooms to practice in. Uh, but there was a sign up sheet. So sign up for that. And if, if you don't want to, if, if you couldn't, you, uh, if, if you didn't want to, uh, how should I say, if, if, if the music rooms were full, you could take the guitar and go play it outside. And I would do that a lot of times now, but I'm not going to go take the guitar and go stand in front of 20 people next to them and play the guitar. I found little spots where I could be alone and play my guitar. But, you know, if I broke a string, I need to go let the guys know in, in, in the rec room that I broke a string. But the thing was, I want to wipe off the strings every time I'm done. And there's kind of etiquette to that. And there's sign-up rooms. But just be respectful of that music equipment because we all have to share it. You know what I mean? So we all have to share it. Um, the TV rooms and the email rooms. Now, these are uh, – these, these rules can be uh, – well, you pay attention. You have a white TV room, a black TV room, a Mexican TV room. You might have – uh, a homeboy TV room. We had a Texas TV room. And I remember a guy was from Texas. He just got there. It was a white guy from Texas. And he heard it was a te Texas room. And he went in there and they said, no, you can't come in there. It's for Texas. He goes, I am from Texas. I'm from Dallas. They didn't mean it like that. Okay. It was, it was the Mexican Texas room, but they didn't call it that. Um, but you can have your home. You can have Serenio's room, Pisces room, Mexican room, Texas, Mexican room. Sometimes they have three and four TV rooms because they're they're more than half the population in prison camps. Um, and then we had a others room. We even had an RDAP room. Only guys in RDAP could go in there. Um, but th so these rooms you got to. Uh, there's only we had 16 chairs in each TV room. And uh, when I went in the white TV room, they told me you can sit here uh, if the chairs are empty. But if somebody comes in, that's their chair, and they'll they'll let you know, and you need to get up. Uh, and they said, if you want to get a chair, there's a, a two year waiting list right now. We can take down your name. And that's when they said, and you got to show your paperwork to get that chair. And that's one of the few times that I've been asked for paperwork in a camp, but I was leaving in a year. So it wouldn't have done me any good anyways. Um, by the time I found out this rule, um, but yeah, so you go, you, you go to your own race in the TV rooms. Now I seen the black TV room. One time um, they were all watching basketball and there was a couple of empty chairs and the guy came in who was white and was a basketball fan. And they said, yeah, you can come in. Well, you can be invited into another racist TV room, but that's kind of rare, but that does happen. Um, that, that, that does happen. But our TV rooms also had computers in there that people use for email. They used to download music on their MP3 players or there's just a bulletin board that they can go. Now, there was like five different terminals with five chairs. Now, ours was in the black the black TV room, had the five computers. I could go in and out of there all day and use the computers, but I'm really not supposed to look at the TV screen. I mean, I'm in there to use the email. So if I was in there trying to fake it and look at their TV, and that, that's wrong. They also have chargers in there for your MP3 players. And uh, people go in there and leave their, uh, plug in their MP3 player. Now, the MP3 player, every two weeks, they have to plug it into the TrueLink's computer and reset it, like punching their code and everything. If they don't do that after two weeks, it gets shut off and it won't work. So that stops people from stealing other people's MP3s because they also have a fingerprint thing. So when you go into the TV rooms and the emails, there's a fingerprint thing that you push, and then there's a PIN code you, put, you push just to log on. The same thing to charge your MP3 player. So, um, so th that's the rule on that. Uh, if I go into a TV room and they're all watching Breaking Bad and I notice that there's three people sitting in front of a computer terminal, but they're watching TV and they're not using the computer. I can go and say, Hey, do you mind if I, can I, can I use the computer? 
and they will get up and let me use the computer. They might not be happy about it, but that's one of the rules that, that is allowed. You can say, hey, I need to use a computer, and they'll get up off the chair. But do it politely and respectful. Never demand anything in prison, okay? Never demand anything from anybody else. And I think that's about it for the 10 rules. Uh, I know there's a lot more rules out there, guys. I know there's a lot more rules. I just came up with 10 right now. Let me check the comments and see what's going on here. Uh, if you could get a guard to bring in one of these, what would it be? Anything? No restrictions. A woman. <laughs> that's that's what I would want. Um, in a camp, we don't need the guards because there's no fences. So uh, we just go to the side of the road and pick up what we ordered. <laughs> uh, in the camps, they, they get pretty much anything in there. But the rest of the other higher level prisons, yeah, the, they have to manipulate the guards and pay them off and stuff like that. Uh, Katrina says they are getting rid of the microwaves because guys are using them. They get super hot water to throw on enemies. They've been doing that for years. Yeah. You know what else? They, they heat up, a like they can buy baby oil on commissary and they'll heat that baby oil up so hot that it's bubbling and then squeeze the bottle and shoot it on a guard or shoot it on an inmate. And it leaves like, you know, it leaves burn marks that will, you know, I mean, but, uh, the camps will probably have microwave. They'll be the last one to take them away. But, you know, I could see that happening one day. Biddy, Katrina says, Biddy, guards can't bring anything in for inmates or they will get fired. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, that's funny. Um, that, that never happens, Katrina. <laughs> um, you'd be surprised. I mean, I, there's news articles about a bunch of guards that were bringing in contraband and penetrant. Guards, any, everybody has a price, Katrina. Even the guards have a price. It might be a high price. Um, some of these penetrants, they'll tell the guards, you know, they'll threaten their family members. You know, you want to go home to your wife and kids tonight or do you want to go to their funeral tomorrow? You're bringing it. You're going to bring this in for me. Um, and maybe the guard reports it. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe, you know, but it, it's, it's been happening for, for 100 years, Katrina. These guards, they can all be bought. Well, they can't all be bought, but most of them have a price. Oh, LOL. Awesome answer. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, that's about it. It's been an hour. Uh, any, I'm going to see if there's some more questions going on here. Could you ever work as a guard? Uh, you know, they have the easiest job. <laughs> if I just sat behind the glass on a desk all day, uh, some of these guys, yeah, maybe I could. But I couldn't see. I, I, I could work as a guard, but I wouldn't want to, like uh, – I, I'd be the inmates friends, you know, I mean, I, I it, it would be too one-sided, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So I guess I, I'm going to say no. Um, <laughs> uh, Gina, I mean, it's not allowed. I know what happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, it's not allowed. I mean, guards don't get time in prison themselves for bringing a contraband. Some of them are willing to take the chance. Uh, yeah. Some of them are willing to take the chance. So uh, give it a couple minutes here. Hey, guys. Oh, check it out. I have a lawyer coming on my show, a guy named Adam Oki, who used to be uh, in prison or he's been in a, a ton of jails. Uh, I think he, he didn't make it to prison, but he's been in like 10 different jails all, all in his, uh, as a teenager and in his 20s. And then he, he turned his life around. He's also an MMA fighter. He's, he's ranked high in the MMA. He's out of Albuquerque. He's got these commercials that says, I used to be in the criminal system. Now, I, now, now I'm a lawyer and I work for you and I'll fight, I'll fight for you. This, his name's Adam Oki. So uh, not this Friday, but March 11th, he's going to be on the talk show I do on my job for Wings for Life. But you get that. And he's a criminal. He's a criminal defense. He's a criminal lawyer, criminal, criminal defense lawyer. Uh, he also does family law, but he's going live with us. You can ask him questions. Uh, I know he's he's a lawyer out of Albuquerque, but he does criminal criminal defense, so you can ask him questions. And he does he does know uh, some he knows a, a bunch about federal crime, the federal system too. But this is a chance for you to ask a lawyer free questions. <laughs> uh, but he's a good guy. Uh, he, you can tell he's right from the streets. When you look at him, you're you're gonna I can't believe this guy's a lawyer. You're still gonna think he's a because he was a gang member, and now he's a lawyer. 
Anyways, that's March 11th, Friday, 3 o'clock um, on this channel, but also on the Wings for Life channel. Uh, so Adam Oki, check him out on YouTube. He's got commercials. Uh, but no, this guy, um, yeah, he's been in and out of jails uh, all up until the age of 20. And then he made it to turn his life around, went to college, went to law school, also became an MMA fighter, uh, multiple martial arts. Anyways, Adam Oki, that's in two weeks uh, on Friday. So check that out. Let's see here. Uh, I love your energy, man. Can't wait for the next dream. Thank you, Biddy. Thank you, Biddy. And work as a car with a family. Oh, I, I don't think they allow that. I don't think they allow that. Um, but I, but now this guy has a lot of felonies on him, Adam Oki. And at least in, in New Mexico, uh, you can, you can become a lawyer with felonies. You have to pass some kind of ethics test to prove that you've turned your life around, something like that. You have to get it approved, but yes, you can be a lawyer after you've been with felonies. So anyways, uh, I'm going to say goodnight, guys. I'm going to go check out the news on this, uh, what's going on in Ukraine. But guys, subscribe, like, share the channel, do all that stuff. I appreciate you guys. Check me on my next video. Y'all have a great night. Thank you for watching.